and it looks about right. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Glosser channel. I'm here today with John Wilson to, to discuss his new book. Welcome back to the program. John, how are you doing today? Terrific, really good. Look, I'm excited to be here talking to you today because you've now released your second book, which is called The Jackals of Slavery. Yep. I think this is a good opportunity for us to promote the book. You've got a lot of interesting new information in there. As I said, it's your second book. You also released a book called Banks and Judges, which was from 1998. That's correct, yeah. Can you give us a bit of background on uh, what got you started on this second book? Well, actually, people have been saying, you've got to write a book. And I said, I've already done one before. I said, no, you've got to bring things up to date. And in fact, uh, the, the chap who was doing my website, uh, he's, he wanted it out. out. He's, he wanted to leave Sydney and all sorts of things. So I, I lost that soil of, of uh, uh, information. And so I thought, oh, why not write a book? I, I, I know you did have a website, so that, that's actually shut down now because the webmaster has moved on? Yeah, I'm, I'm incompetent as far as <laughs> that sort of stuff. So yeah, as soon as Terry left, I thought, oh, I, I kept paying it uh, annual stuff for a couple of years. And I said, oh, it's, it's uh, no use anymore. Uh, and people say, well, write a book. And I said, OK, I'll, I'll do a book. But the, the book could have been uh, monstrous. And I thought, well, yeah, this is not going to attract anybody to pick it up and read it. So uh, I've tried to keep it as minimal as possible, but still get the, the vital information through. Because uh, that, that's what it's all about. It's, it's all about educating. And I often quote uh, Thomas Jefferson. He said that... Uh, if people don't know how to govern themselves, then educate them. So I'm trying to be an educator. Um. Well, I noticed that the, bo the book's actually a very convenient length. It's 193 pages, plus you've got uh, a synopsis and a preamble. The book could have actually been a lot longer than that, couldn't it? Oh, it could have filled the library. But uh, it's, it's all repetitious. Once you get the, the, the core values established, and, and, and get the rule of law in place, everything, everything else follows. Uh, but uh, unless you've got those foundations, um, you've got no civilization, you've got no freedom, uh, you just, you, you are slaves. And, uh, and the smart blokes, they think, oh, we'll take advantage of this. And, and they call, I call them the jackals. They're the cheats, like the banks and the, <laughs> the squindlers and so forth. Uh, so we are at the mercy of these jackals because we don't have the fundamental knowledge to protect ourselves and that's what I've tried to do in the book. I uh, re regurgitate history and, uh, and, and, and put it in people's uh, hands exactly how to go about defending themselves and their families etc. Well I have to say I've now read your new book twice uh, it's an excellent read. I would really recommend it to people. There's a lot of fascinating information in there. One of the things, John, I found very interesting was a comparison between the first and the second book, uh, particularly the title. The first book was simply called Banks and Judges, and that's a very literal descriptor of what the book is about. It's about the banks and the judges. The second book has a much more dramatic title, and that is, of course, The Jackals of Slavery. These these are strong words, jackals and slavery. Can you give the can you give the listeners and viewers an explanation as to how that title was chosen? You mentioned the the jackals being notorious types of characters or swindlers or con men, but your choice of words in that title. Can you explain that? Just like to begin at the beginning. Well, yes, uh, jackals have been around as a symbol of of, of treachery for, for many many uh, millennia. In fact. Uh, back in ancient Egypt, one of their gods was a jackal called uh, Anubis, so A-N-U-B-I-S, and, and that is portrayed in so many hieroglyphics. Here's <laughs> uh, one of the gods of, of ancient Egypt is a jackal, and, uh, and this uh, well, uh, scenario, or whatever you want to call it, has been with us it, indefinitely. It's always there. You've always got this, this uh, element of humanity who are cheats and, and, and swindlers and, and murderers and whatever. It, and even, even the Bible says that uh, uh, a thief 
only goes to steal and kill and destroy. And so uh, all throughout uh, our culture we've had this uh, evil enemy in our midst and uh, they, they get away with it because we don't have uh, the knowledge to defend themselves. But over, over history people have woken up and they said no we're not going to put up with this anymore and they've got, got together and worked out a plan to defeat the bad guys and uh, the most noticeable one uh, was back in, in 12, uh, 15 when uh, the ordinary people were getting sick and tired of uh, the uh, excesses and, and tyranny and, and what they were suffering at the hands of the king and so they, they drew up a charter of rights called the, the Magna Carta and that, that, that's uh, virtually an immortal document which lays down uh, the principles of democracy, of how people uh, are not subject, they are not slaves, they are free men. In fact, the key word in the key passage in, in Magna Carta says that no free man shall, and it goes on from there. Yes. So it's all about freedom as opposed to tyranny. And, it, and uh, I've, my t-shirts previously have always said, trial by jury is democracy. And a chap in England said, uh, also, you could put, say that trial by judge is tyranny. And I said, you're dead right. And that's what it is. It's, it's, it's slavery against tyranny. And the idea of having this little book is, is, is to educate people about the fundamentals, things which I've had to dig out of libraries, have been buried in archives and so forth. Uh, but it's part of our history. Uh, it, it, it's a simple matter of truth, you know. You, you can't go uh, exaggerating. You just stick to the hard, uh, hard copy truth, and it's 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 all there. And I've, I've tried tried to make that. In, in fact, the publishers do do a rather nice uh, job of it, and they're uh, quite attractive. And so uh, I, I put the manuscript in, and they said, oh, "It's got to be edited." I said, okay, go ahead and edit it. And so, so that took a, a, a while. And they said, oh, now it's got to be designed. And they said, I do it design. But the, the cover has got to be this cover. Yes. It has got to be that cover. That what we're looking at there, <laughs> a very historic uh, cartoon from the Very bulletin. meaningful. Yes. It says a million words, not just a thousand words, it says a million words. Yes. And what we're looking at there, of course, is the uh, illustration called Hopeton's Blunder pertaining to Lord John Hopeton. Yeah, he was a scoundrel. Yes. Uh, aristocracy. They, they had no intention uh, of Australia being a free country. None whatsoever. And as I said, the book, it is an excellent read, 193 pages. If the viewers and listeners would like to get a copy for themselves, can you explain to them where it's available? Well, it's available through Amazon and, and uh, it's online, as I say. The, uh, the publisher said, yes, we're doing it through uh, all the procedures and so forth. And in fact, if they go onto Amazon, go to books, type in the title, boom, up she comes. Hopefully, uh, it's on e e-book as well, because I, I've just re recently paid a fee to, uh, to translate it onto an e-book, so... Uh, r r Go, dog! <laughs> so, the people who... If it's an e-book, they can get it instantly. Yes. If, they, if they want the hard, uh, co hard copy, they're going to have to uh, wait for delivery but it's, it's available. I think hard copy is a good choice because it, it's an excellent uh, it's an excellent reference. It's an excellent reference book. Yeah, because it, it's something you can go to. In, in fact, the way I've described it on the back, I said, here is an intended handbook. Okay? So it's to hand. You, you put it away on the shelf and you say, oh, that so, uh, something tri triggers. And they'll go back to it and they'll find it. And they'll find the laws in that which are our laws, there to defend us, which are not being told to you. I think you're right. I think a, lo a lot of deception does take place, a lot of trickery in the legal system, although, of course, that's nothing new. But we are not always misled, but, but things are suppressed from us. They, they don't want us to be educated or knowledgeable well, on these topics. No, you, you, could, you could quote the Bible about uh, woe to you lawyers and so forth, and you can quote the, the Bill of Rights, 
And the Bill of Rights puts it very, very nicely. It says that uh, evil, that's the word in the, uh, the law, evil counsellors, judges and ministers endeavouring to subvert and extirpate the laws and liberties of the people. Bob, <laughs> nothing's new under the sun, just that we fall asleep. And the bad guys say, oh, they don't know what they're doing. We can just cut them in the, uh, and rape and pillage and steal whatever we want, you know? And it takes, takes a little bit of a while for people to wake up. And then they say, oh, we've got to protest against this. And uh, a, a chap in America, Edward uh, Howdershop, he put it very beautifully. He said, there are four boxes in defense of liberty. And he said, the first one is a slap box. That's what all these protests down in Melbourne is. They're soapboxing, they're waving banners and beating drums and, and so forth. And the second box, that's the soapbox. The second box is the ballot box, where you elect people to go into a parliament and, and draw up good legislation to uh, secure your rights and all this sort of thing. Okay? And when that fails, you've got the third box, which has always been there in the background. And with, this is what people have got to understand and use. They've got to use the jewellery box because that's where democracy is exercised. That's where people, they get together and they uh, analyse uh, not just uh, the facts and the law but also the justice of the law. And if they decide, no, that law is bad, it's doing harm, uh, it, it, it's not what we, what we want, you know, <laughs> basically, it's, it, it's actually hurting us, then the jury can nullify that law. They cancel the law out. That's the power of the jury. And that's the power of democracy, because that's people, we the people. Democracy means the people rule. And they rule either indirectly by representatives who are supposed to do the right thing, or if that fails, they resort to the third box, which is the jury box, and say, OK, we're taking over, we're going to govern. We govern from the courts. And that's what I say in the book. Uh, one chapter there says, courts are government. Parliament is not government. Parliament is a debating house from uh, representatives of various communities who uh, mull over the, a situation and draft a, a bill, an act of parliament, to make something happen. Okay, and and that's, but they do not govern the people, and that's why there there are two forms of law. One law is common law, and the other one is statute law. Now look at the words, common. Common means of the people, by the people, for the people. Common law is democracy, and then you have statute law, statute. Okay, which is the law of the state, by the state, for the state. Okay. And, and fair enough, they can manage the affairs of the state, but they can't control or, 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 do, or dominate the people, because the people are above that. Common law uh, overrules statute law. But you, you tell that to a lawyer, oh, no, 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 statute law overrules common law. And I say, not in a democracy. And then they shut up. Because they, it's a matter of who, has, <laughs> who is sovereign, you know? And, and the word sovereign is very important. Sovereign means uh, the ultimate authority to make and impose laws. So what, uh, you go along to a lawyer or a judge and they say, oh, Parliament's got sovereignty. I said, no, they haven't. Not in a democracy. Okay. This is a democracy where the people, in the past, uh, some good judges were saying, oh, uh, sovereignty lies with the people, and they're dead right. But you talk to them today, they say, no, 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 the Parliament, uh, <laughs> you've got to obey the, the laws that come out of Parliament. And, and this, this is the situation we're in at the moment. Uh, we're, we're losing our freedoms because these, the bad laws, these bad legislation that comes out of these uh, houses of debate, are being forced on us. But we're supposed to have, uh, have protection uh, from the sheriffs, but poor dumb sheriffs, they don't know what they're doing. So we've got to educate. It's all about education.